In this video, I want to show you a de-rusting solution that I just found, and I'm going to try it out, so stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming back for another video. In this one here, I want to show you this uh, de-rusting solution that I just came across. Um, I found it originally on the Beyond Ballistics YouTube channel. And uh, he went in great detail. So if you want to check out that video, uh, he gives you a, a lot more detail than I'm going to give you. But what I did was I wrote down uh, the ingredients and the, the proper quantities of each ingredient to make up a solution. And I was trying to find something equivalent to Evaporust. I've got a couple of gallons of Evaporust and I'm, out, I'm about ready. I was about ready to buy some more. So I love Evaporust, it's just kind of pricey. And uh, so I thought I'd give this a try. It's really, really simple. Um, it's just three ingredients and actually in the, uh, well, four technically, if you count the water, um, I, ac I accidentally left out one of the ingredients um, and it's this stuff right here, um, dishwashing soap. Dishwashing soap or something that acts as a surfactant and I neglected to put that in my, my solution yesterday. And uh, I mixed it up and here's the video of that. Okay, on with the experiment, our homemade de-rusting solution. So it starts off with citric acid right here. And this is the citric acid I got, found it on Amazon. Can't remember what I paid, but it was pretty cheap, two pounds of it. Now what you need uh, to just mix up a quart of this is 100 grams of the citric acid. And uh, that is the equivalent of 3.52 ounces or when I measured it out and weighed it, it came to uh, seven tablespoons. So that's what I have already in here, seven tablespoons of citric acid. And then to that, we're gonna add the water next, which is one quart, one liter, one quart. We'll put that in there next. And I'm just going to agitate it to kind of dissolve it. It's dissolved. It looks like it's dissolving pretty quick. Now this solution is supposed to last a long time, a lot longer than an evaporust. So we're going to see because I'm familiar with evaporust. I've been using it for years and it is pretty expensive. I'll let you know right here how much it costs now. All right, well, that's pretty well dissolved. There's still a few crystals in there. But uh, the only other ingredient we add is baking soda. Just This is just regular old Arm & Hammer baking soda. And uh, you want 63 grams of it, which is the equivalent of 2.22 ounces or when I weighed it out, it measured to three and a half tablespoons. And then I've got it right in here. So I'm gonna add that and it should foam. Yes, it foams really good. Hopefully it doesn't foam over. It looks like it might foam over. Wow, look at that. pop some of these bubbles and maybe it won't make a mess. This is my first time doing this, folks, so we're going to see. There, it's going down. Now, the, uh, the big advantage to this solution, from what I saw, was that it attacks the rust but not the base metal, which is the claim that Evaporust makes. So if you're worried about preserving something, the base metal of something and not eroding it away, this might be the solution for you. We'll see. All right, so what I have is a rusty chisel here. You can see it's pretty rusty. I'm gonna put that in there. I've got a little rusty gouge, kind of the same thing here. 
throw that in there. That's the before. Here's a rusty chisel. All right, we're gonna throw that in there. And then here's a, an old knife blank. It's got quite a bit of rust on it. Both sides. You can see that. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in there. And then I just got this little camp buddy knife uh, this past weekend. I got it at a flea market and it's pretty rusty. The uh, not terribly bad rust, but there we go. You can kind of see. Uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll open up these blades. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll open the blades all the way. Maybe I'll leave that one half open like that. And it's pretty rusty down inside there too. I'm not sure if you can see, but Let's throw that in there. And uh, we'll give it a little agitation. I'm not smelling any fumes coming off of this. There's no foul odors, anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and snap the lid on. And we're gonna let that set for an hour and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Yeah, so 24 hours later, um, I think I probably could have just left it in there for five hours or six hours or, or something like that and got the same results. Um, but I got sidetracked and I went off doing other things and I just had to help go, I just had to go help a friend out uh, work on his boat. Yeah, so I just got back home and I uh, pulled out that solution and here's a clip of me uh, pulling this stuff out of the solution. Okay, well it's actually 24 hours later. Uh, after an hour I checked it and it hadn't really done too much, so I let it go overnight. And uh, you can see there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that came off in the solution. So let's uh, let's pull one of these out and take a look at it. How's that? Well, at first glance, it did a really good job. At first glance. It looks really good. It looks the equivalent of evaporust made in the USA. Yeah, this came out. This came out really good too. no rust left you know stuff like this i'd normally just clean on my wire wheel a lot quicker you know i wouldn't use this solution this is the big one here this is the one that i really wanted to uh see how it did on this pocket knife because that's mainly what i'd use a solution like this for stuff that uh you could use a wire wheel but you'd have to pull out your dremel you know and and all that uh, this gets down in all the nooks and crannies. Let me uh, give this a good rinse and then we'll uh, get back to you. Okay, yeah, and we got it. We got them all uh, rinsed off and cleaned up. And here's the end result. Uh, this chisel was so rusty, I didn't even notice it has a crack in it. Pretty substantial crack, so I'm glad I... Uh, I use that. I, it probably would have still showed up if I just hit it on my wire wheel. But I didn't realize that had that uh, damage to it. And uh, and this little guy here cleaned up really nice. This uh, rusty knife blank uh, cleaned up really nice. And this Andears E8 chisel that I can... Uh, Clean up and uh, resharpen, fix the uh, boogered up bevel on it, and uh, put it back into use now. Yeah, if you live in an area where you're, you have experienced a lot of humidity, 
moisture, uh, like, like I do, everything rusts. And it's just, I'm constantly, you know, having to de-rust things, clean rust off of things, off of tools, knives. Now, when I buy this, this little pot, like this little pocket knife, I got this the other day at a uh, flea market and I paid way too much for it. I paid eight bucks for it and I didn't even look at it that close. Didn't realize how shrunk up the uh, handle scales are and that, but it's got some snap back to it. And uh, that solution really did a good job on the rust. Now down inside, I'm still seeing some, um, not sure if that would show up on camera, but down inside there's uh, still a bit of rust. So I think what I'm gonna do, it's not gonna hurt this, this old pocket knife, it's missing the bail. It's a camp buddy. Um, and it, and on, on the tank stamp, it says Camp Buddy USA. Um, but I think what I'll do is the solution is still good and it, it's supposed to last longer than Evaporous does. I got a lot of use out of the Evaporous that I bought, um, but it's, it's about spent now. It's pretty dark. When it gets like a real dark color, it just, you have to leave it in there so long and, you know, you know, it might still do the job, but you have to just leave it in there so much longer. Um, I think 24 hours should be like, you know, the max for any kind of a solution. Now you can mix this up weaker, you know, if, if let's say you had something you want to de-rust and uh, you're going to be gone for the weekend or something like that, you could mix up a weaker batch, throw it in there and just leave it in there all weekend. It's not going to hurt it, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're mixing up a, a super strong batch, I'd keep a closer eye on it and make sure it's not supposed to attack the base metal, just the rust, um, but it will. You know, if you watch that video, like a guy says, it's a, it's a very microscopic amount of base metal that it removes over time, but it, it will remove some. So if you have something that's really valuable, um, you know, then I would just mix up a regular batch per the instructions and then uh, keep a close eye on it, check it like every hour, every couple of hours, you know, pull it out, rinse it, and then coat it right away with WD-40 or something to prevent flash rusting. Yeah, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of this to uh, maybe about a tablespoon or so to that cork that I already mixed up. And then I'm gonna throw this little guy back in there with the blades opened up and see if we can't get some more of that uh, rust that's down in there off the springs and stuff on the inside of the springs and see if that doesn't tackle that. But this is the first time trying this and I'm really impressed. And uh, I'm gonna do all the math for you and figure out how much it cost me to make a gallon. I'll just project it out to a gallon and uh, compare that to uh, Evaporust and I'll put that in right here. So all my uh, knife guys out there that, that restore a lot of knives, rusty, they get old rusty knives and stuff like that, you know, you might want to give this, uh, this rust remover formula a try. It's, uh, it's, it's very inexpensive in comparison to Evaporust. And now when, it, when it's working, when you add that uh, baking soda, it does gas off a little bit. It gives off a little bit of hydrogen gas. Um, so, you, you know, definitely want to use it in a well-ventilated area or just open up a window and turn a fan on or something like that, you know, um, you know, in your workshop or whatever. Um, but, yeah, give it a try and let me know if you try it. Come on back and leave me a comment and stuff. Let me know what you think or if you've come up with a way to make it work even better. Um, yeah, let me know that, too. I've tried electrolysis and it, and it works really well. Um, I've used uh, vinegar. Um, and that works really well, but I just wanted to give this a try. It intrigued me when I saw that video on uh, Beyond Ballistics, and I thought I'd give it a try. And so I ordered the, uh, you know, the bag of citric acid, and this two pounds is probably going to be enough to make gallons, you know, gallons of this stuff. So I've got enough to last me for a long time, and baking soda that we already always have that around the house. So really the only thing you'd have in dishwashing soap. So the only thing you really need to get is the citric acid if you don't already have that laying around. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much to my subscribers. So this is Dave. I'll see you in the next one.